section six, we're looking at parts of circles, especially a part that's called the arc. Now, first of all, a, a circle is defined by its center, which is the point in the middle. We also have a diameter, which is the distance across. We also have a radius, which is the distance from the center to a point. And the new thing, and this is the important part here today, is the central angle. So if I take two radii, uh, central angle is any angle formed by a radius, another radius, and the center. Now this is important for looking at an arc, which is a part of a circle. When we look at those, that central angle, notice these radii coming off are cutting off a part of that circle. A circle is also the only the line going or the curve going around the outside. A circle itself does not include its interior. So an arc is part of a circle. So it's going from R to S. Now a semicircle, first of all, is half of a circle. A minor arc then would be less than half of the circle, and a major arc would be more than half. So if I put the major arc with the minor arc, uh, I could get the whole circle. Now when we name these things, notice they've just named our arc with this curved line and then two points connecting it. With the major, major arc, they've used three points, S, T, R. Now we could use three points with a minor arc, but what the three points are doing is telling us which direction we're going around. Now notice here with the S, we're starting at S, we have to go through T, and then we keep going around until we get to R, which means we have to go the long way around, which is what makes us a major arc. If we look over at this red one here, if we added another point in here, maybe I call this point A, we could also call this arc RAS. It would still be a minor arc because of the picture. When we want to measure an arc then, the important thing to look at is the central angle. Remember, if this point S is the center, then the central angle would be the radii here that are cutting that off. And since it's 360 degrees around a circle, however big or small I make that, that central angle will decide how big my arc is. This is 50 degrees of the circle. We can also add arcs together. So if I have an arc here, Notice I could add these angles to get angle A to the center to C. And so I can do the same thing with the arcs as well. So looking at this one, the first one asks for the arc measure of B to C. And we can see the central angle here is marked as 32. So the measure of arc BC is 32. And that would be measured in degrees also. The next one, BD, we want the measure of arc BD and this is the correct way to write it with little m. So we look where b is, we look where d is. Since there's only two points, we take the shortest route. And notice that's adding this arc here of 32 and this one of 58. And so we can just add those parts to get the whole arc, which will be 90 degrees. Next, let's look at ABC. Now notice where ABC is drawn. It's drawn through the center. It appears to be a, a straight line. And so we'll accept that that's a straight line and that they're trying to tell us that this is a diameter. If it is a diameter, then that means it's cutting the circle in half, which would make this a 180 degree angle. And so the arc is also 180 degrees. Our last one, the measure of arc AB, is just looking at this part right here. We can also use subtraction then. If the whole half here of A to C, we just ABC we found was 180, so if I want to take away this part right here, I'll just subtract that 32 that we had there. And that will give me 148 degrees. The next thing we've got is the circumference of the circle, which just should just be review for you. The circumference, these are our formulas, pi times diameter, or 2 pi times the radius. We also have a little bit of vocabulary here, concentric circles. So uh, that would be when you have the center the same. So concentric circles are just kind of growing outward. And the next thing we'll look at is arc length. This is different than arc measure. When we talked about arc measure, remember that that was the angle of the arc. But arc length is going to talk about how long that arc is. So if we pull it out straight, kind of like circumference. In fact, if we think about the whole circumference of a circle, we could split it into smaller parts or take a fraction of that circumference. That's exactly what arc length is. So if we know the circumference, we can multiply it by whatever fraction of that circle it is. We can find that fraction by taking the central angle and dividing it by 360. For example, this one right here, 
using our formula for circumference first, since we have radius, we'll use 2 pi r, and our radius is 15. Notice it asks us to leave it in terms of pi, so that will give us 30 pi for our circumference. We could also say centimeters there. The arc length we're looking at is going around from x to p to y. And so to find that, we're looking for arc length. And using our formula, we're going to first look at the fraction of the circle. This is a 240 degree arc out of 360. And we'll multiply that times our circumference, which we just found to be 30 pi. Now we're going to reduce this fraction here. If it's 240 degrees, notice that that's 2 thirds of our circle. If we multiply that by the 30 pi, that's going to give us 20 pi. Our units, since we're measuring how long it is, it's going to be a unit of length still, and we're going to keep our answer as centimeters. And the next thing are, is congruent arcs. Congruent arcs have to have the same measure, so measure is talking about the central angle measure, and they also need to have the same length. Okay, so notice I could have the same angle measure here, like these are 60 and 60, but they have a different angle measure, so these are not congruent. Uh, we could also think maybe if I take this smaller circle, I might be able to just make it longer so that it actually has the same length, but because I have a different central angle, again, it would not be congruent. 